Hey everybody, welcome to the uh, Sexy Iron episode. Um, basically, I just wanted to show you all this. This was something that my wife found. I think it's from a warming closet from a, an old cast iron stove. Um, she found this up in West Virginia at a spot uh, where there used to be an old log cabin that we were digging. And uh, yeah, two pieces. Um, I'm thinking about getting it uh, welded back together and uh, putting it above our closet. So. Um, definitely tell me what y'all think about that. Uh, I'm going to show you all a bunch of iron on this episode and we're going to talk a little bit about electrolysis and uh, <clears throat> I'll share some tips and techniques that have worked for me pretty well over the years. Um, so here we go. Okay so here are some double barrel shotguns. Uh, I think everybody in Louisiana had a side by side and, uh, and the thin metal of these often doesn't um, doesn't uh, preserve very well. Um, sometimes you get an end that looks like that. You see how it's almost eaten through. Um, it's kind of hard in general to preserve iron in Louisiana. We've got salts in the ground here in some cases and uh, and uh, it's just kind of hard. It takes a long time. It takes a lot of work. Um, I've had a lot better results from uh, iron dug in other states. But at any rate, um, here's some black powder uh, shotguns. This example's turned upside down. Just wanted you to show you all a couple of those, handful of those, to see kind of what that looks like. And uh, as promised, I've got a uh, got a little bit of footage here of a um, of that boot pistol barrel that I found in the other episode here, um, maybe two weeks ago. Um, so if you haven't seen that episode, you definitely gonna want to check that out because we found some awesome old coins and some other stuff. Uh, so check that out. Here's a link to that. And uh, here are two breech blocks. These are both from double barrel shotguns. You can see the firing pins there for the center fire. You can see a barrel selector on both of these examples. So you can, I guess, choose which barrel. Notice that they are black, uh, black powder. Um, at least the one on the left here is. And you can see where the nipples were, um, where the percussion cap went. That's what a breech block looks like. Uh, a lot of people can't ID those accurately, but that's what they are. At any rate, um, you know, with iron like this, it, it always is a decision, and I'm always like, do I want to bring it home or not? Any piece of a gun, any piece of a firearm or a weapon automatically comes home with me, always. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, with tools, other items, I have to kind of do some choosing because it takes so long uh, to, to do the electrolysis on these. But I thought you all would appreciate seeing those those breech blocks. And here's that boot pistol barrel. You can see very clearly where the percussion cap went. Um, yeah, that cleaned up really pretty nicely. Super pleased with that. Um, you can tell where the where it was attached to the wooden grip. Um, I also wanted to say, you know, if you've got solution down in that while you're doing electrolysis, you can actually um, clamp this, fill that up with solution in your gun barrel, and then lower a uh, copper wire, sacrificial copper wire down in there. And I tried that and it worked beautifully so that you're only electrocuting the inside, only putting the um, electrolysis on the inside of a, of a gun barrel. And that works super, super well. Um, so that's one technique for being able to get those gun barrels that nice and beautifully clean on the inside. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is perfectly smooth on the inside. So very, very pleased with how that turned out. Those are not often found, those relics. Um, I think most people don't dig iron signals like that, but that is definitely a pre-Civil War, 1850s or 40s boot pistol. Great. Okay, folks, I want to show you my electrolysis setup. I've gotten a couple of questions about it. Um, I've got right here um, a step down, step up, step down inverter. Um, because the output here um, is needed, needs to be 220 for this. Um, and so I've had to, to do that in order to have the correct power for this. And the thing I like about this system right here is that <clears throat> you can see immediately that it's charging. It will give a verb, or a verbal, it'll give a, an audio response here that'll just a high buzz when it's not making connection. Um, so, you know, if you are priming a relic, you know, like this, I think that's a lightning rod, um, iron lightning rod, but see how I've kind of primed it and sanded a little bit there on the tip to uh, make sure um, that it makes connection. But sometimes, you know, with a, 
with, with a <clears throat> setup that doesn't give that type of feedback, um, you may not know until the next day when there's still all the rust on it that it wasn't making connection well. Um, so it's nice to have that feedback. The other thing is that I can see the amount of, of voltage and so forth current that's coming back through. 2 amps, 16 volts coming back through. So I know it's connected properly because I'm receiving this. And I can, imp I can increase or decrease the circulation. So sometimes I like to give it a couple of blasts of, of higher and then I'll back it off. Okay, notice that it has a manual and an automatic setting. You always have to have a manual charger for, um, for electrolysis. So, um, <clears throat> and of course the power light to let you know that you can shock the heck out of yourself if you touch this. So, um, there's going to be two leads here from this battery charger. The first lead is this one, which is coming over here and attached to a stainless steel bucket. Notice that you can't put your bucket in your bathtub because then if you touch the side of the bathtub, you will get shocked. Um, so I'm floating the, the bucket that's actually surrounding the whole relic and you know because electrolysis is, is uh, eye of, it's like line of sight. Um, so it's going to go from whatever is you know within visible distance of it. And so I like to have a setup which is similar to some people build baskets. I like to have a setup where it, it's going to draw, um, it's going to go in every direction you know, to, to remove the rust. So that's what this bucket does, every direction and even the bottom. So this is just a stainless steel bucket and um, I do have the window open here because you need to make sure that you're not building up any gases that are dangerous. Um, so I do have circulation in this room. And, um, and then here, uh, <clears throat> so this is the negative, um, the black terminal, and it's going to flow from negative to positive here, the electrons and remove that rust which is then going to rest in the bottom. Now I just basically <clears throat> use for an electrolyte, I just use um, you know, baking soda and so I just sprinkle that into some warm water, stir it or swish it all around and then, um, and then I've got these clamps set up um, and uh, suspend the relic. The relic I'm currently working on here is a very old wrench. Um, actually no it's not a wrench, it's an old gate hook. Um, it's kind of that had a had a an attachment on one side and it just had a, like a hook and eye that went down on the other and it's hand forged and it's about I don't know it's about a foot long uh, 12 inches long so that's my um, electrolysis setup I just wanted to show you all that and uh, I'll be right back hey everybody and here is that finished um, gate hook I just wanted to show you all what that looks like when it's all finished with electrolysis all preserved all sealed and that's some sort of a hand forged job right there I really like it um, you don't you don't see too many of those um, in that nice shape so I was happy to have one that was not bent that was completely preserved so that's what that looks like I'm totally stoked about that all right back to the iron show Okay, I wanted to show you all a little bit of uh, <clears throat> an iron display. I'm kind of outgrowing this, uh, but uh, yeah, I've got a ton of iron over here in this little corner cupboard. I've um, got some pot uh, pieces from uh, bottoms of cooking pots, pot ears, um, some old locks, um, just stuff like that. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of hooks here. I've got hooks from like you know, things like S-hooks from, from old cooking pots where they were suspended over stoves. Um, I've got, um, there's another nice little um, hand-forged hook and eye right here, just like the one I've got in the tank. Um, pretty cool item. I just like those things. Everything was handmade, so they all tell a story. Um, all these big um, handmade pieces, there's a railroad spike, but, you know, spikes like this, from a colonial spot here. I mean, that's very much handmade. I just like those items a lot. You know, some of them are pretty, pretty wild. Um, just obviously made for one purpose or another. Kind of neat. Um, so I have a lot of that type of stuff. On down here, I've got a trivet. I've got some ax heads. Um, I've got some pieces of coffee grinder handles um, from coffee mills, box mills, and so forth. Some interesting tools there, more axe heads down here. Um, I think that's a pedal off of a piano. Um, there's a buggy step, we've got some picket pins here. 
Um, those are kind of neat. Um, it's definitely a picket pin, so you drive it in to let your horse eat around in a circle. Um, and some hammer heads and some other stuff back in there. Then down here on the bottom, I've got a whole pile of stirrups. Just a ton of stirrups. Some of them are, go back to the 1700s. It's kind of interesting. Got a corn knife over here. I got a nice uh, wrench and some... Um, you know, you never find these wide bladed hose in very good shape. This one is not doing so well, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to better preserve that. Um, I have some sugarcane knife here, very old one. Um, some horseshoes and so forth. A big hook and uh, two more sugarcane knives over there. Um, so I also wanted to just give a little shout out here um, to my buddy Tom over at Killjoy Customs. He made this uh, relic guitar for me, and it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's red, white, and blue. Got red, white, and blue strings on it. Completely refurbished guitar. Um, if you look closely here, you can see that it's got uh, bullets inset here, flat buttons, walking Liberty half dollar. Those are real coins, those are real metal detecting finds. Look at this, the mini ball here, pretty, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I've got coins, grips from an old pistol. That's a Civil War, uh, um, Civil War shoulder scale. You know, these are reproduction plates, of course. Um, we wouldn't do that to a plate, but you know, the coins are real. The GAR button is real. Um, the Eagle button is real and so forth. And I just, it's, I just like this guitar a lot. Um, so I just wanted to give him a little shout out there over at Killjoy Customs. Um, Tom, yeah, what a what a great piece. Anyhow, so I just wanted to give you all a little bit of a tour of some of the iron, and uh, like I say, it's uh, it takes a takes a bit of doing to decide to bring some iron home. Um, I also wanted to say um, if you haven't read this book um, by Bill Dancy, definitely check that out. Great, great book. Um, there, I know there's still copies of it left. Got some cast iron stove legs there and a and a bit from a double bladed axe so hope you all enjoy that little tour if you have any questions about electrolysis or anything like that feel free to drop them in the comments below and i will answer them as best i can catch you all on the next mm -hmm.